there's a range of different pieces of data that are suggesting that the Reserve Bank doesn't necessarily need to go again. Uh, we do believe that if they are surprised on the upside by inflation in the December quarter, then they'll raise rates again in February, but not if things turn out a bit better than what they thought. Inflation is coming down, and the October indicator did show a little bit of a lower read than what uh, the market was expecting, but there are other indicators as well that point in the direction of the Reserve Bank being able to hold where they are, more likely than not, so that they can see inflation come down back into target between 2 and 3% by 2025. But would you say February remains a live meeting? Absolutely, February is still live. Uh, they'll be looking to the national accounts, which come later this week. They'll be looking to uh, the reads in the November monthly and December quarterly CPI and what happens with the labour market, as well as domestic spending. Uh, there's a number of things they'll be looking at. Uh, February is absolutely live. Uh, and if they see inflation coming down more slowly than they'd like, they will act. But if they see inflation coming down at least as quickly as they had hoped, then they can probably hold where they are. RBA Governor Michelle Bullock has described Australia's inflation problem now as largely homegrown. How would you describe the scale and challenge of Australia's inflation issue? Well, that's absolutely right that domestic pressures are what's feeding into a lot of the inflation now. That's why we are seeing services inflation high. But it has also peaked. Uh, and on top of the declining inflation in goods prices coming from the rest of the world, uh, that's why inflation has already come down a fair way and will continue to do so. So while she's, what she's saying is factually correct, we need to keep in context that we are seeing inflation falling from here. What do you make of the Governor's communication style? Is she telling it like it is or is she, as some headlines have suggested, disconnected with the experience of ordinary Australians? Well, I think it's important to always look at what people have actually said, not what they've been reported to have said. Uh, I think it's important to realise that there is still pockets of strong demand in the Australian economy, in part because population is growing so quickly, even though many Australian households are actually getting squeezed by high inflation, by a rising tax take and, for some, and increasingly higher interest rates. Uh, I think the Governor is trying to be as transparent as she can. She is a much more plain-spoken person than the average central banker. And uh, I think you know, we need to focus on what people actually say rather than what they're reported to have said. The government's already announced it's axing infrastructure projects to dampen inflationary pressures. Should it do more to help the RBA, which only has one tool, the setting of interest rates? Kirsten, it's important for us all to remember that, in fact, the way fiscal policy is designed in Australia already gives us a fair amount of lean against high inflation. In Australia, we don't have indexed tax brackets, so a rising tax take is actually part of the macroeconomic policy response to high inflation. That is sucking income out of Australian households, which is, while it's painful, is actually working in the same direction as monetary policy. You, there's a real sense in which fiscal policy is working hand in glove with monetary policy at the moment in a way that doesn't happen in countries like the US and Canada where tax brackets are indexed for inflation. Uh, it's not comfortable at the time because people's income is being squeezed, uh, but it's important to remember that that is an important sense in which fiscal policy already is working together with monetary policy. We're going to learn a lot more about the strength of the economy on Wednesday with the latest GDP data. What do you expect to see? Well, we're still working through all the figures. Uh, the ABS puts out uh, some partial indicators in the lead up to the national accounts. Uh, it's still looking like domestic demand in Australia is in the slow lane, uh, that we're going to see quite slow growth, particularly relative to population growth, and that we'll see a decline in hours worked which means that some of the concerns around productivity will reverse out in what are very noisy figures. Lucy Ellis, thank you. Thank you.